This is the Washington Times front page for Tuesday, June 14th, 2022. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Wall Street has fallen into a bear market as investors are skittish about unrelenting inflation and recession fears. Tom Howe reports the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 876 points, or nearly 3%, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq index fell nearly 5% as part of a day-long sell-off on Monday. The S&P 500 fell 3.9% and closed more than 21% off of its record high in January. That sends it into bear market territory, defined as a 20% drop from its recent high. Bear markets are viewed as a telltale sign of investors' pessimism about the economy. Analysts say that investors are responding to a Federal Reserve that is slow-moving and responding to a 40-year high in inflation. The White House said it's monitoring the sell-offs, but pointed to the global nature of the upheaval and insisted the U.S. economy can withstand various shocks, regardless of the roller coaster on Wall Street, and that supply chains will improve over time. Federal internal investigators have uncovered failures by universities to require scientists doing taxpayer-funded research to disclose when they also take money from foreign countries. Ryan Lovely supports more than two-thirds of National Institutes of Health grant recipients examined by the Inspector General failed to require their researchers and scientists to disclose at least one type of foreign financial interest or support as required under federal rules. The Inspector General's office surveyed 617 grantees from October 2020 to January 2021, whose research spanned the full range of what NIH funds, including neuroscience, cardiovascular science, and infectious disease research. The NIH awarded $31 billion to grantees in fiscal year 2021. You can read all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. You can also find our entire roster of Washington Times podcasts at WashingtonTimes.com slash podcasts. National political correspondent Kerry Pickett takes a look at the debate over the AR-15, both the most popular rifle in America and the most reviled. More than 20 million AR-15-style rifles are owned legally by Americans, according to the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Advocates point to the gun's low recoil, light weight, and ease of use as reasons for its popularity in sports shooting and recreation. Those same reasons are exactly what critics say makes the rifle a favorite among mass shooters and why it should be banned. Studies during a 10-year ban on the sale of the AR-15 and other similar semi-automatic rifles that began in 1994 showed a decline in the number of deaths from mass shootings and a decline in the rate of increase in the number of mass shootings. In another form of gun control that's being debated, Alex Warrior reports states and Congress are looking to strengthen red flag laws to keep guns out of the hands of people who may be a danger based on their behavior. Red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders vary nationwide. Police, family, co-workers, neighbors, or friends typically can petition a judge to have guns removed when they feel someone is at high risk of hurting themselves or others. Florida has what's called the Baker Act, which allows for people to be taken for mental health evaluations. California and other states have similar laws that allow institutionalization for up to 72 hours for someone to be evaluated. Nineteen states and the District of Columbia have red flag laws, and the majority of them were enacted from 2018 to 2020 after the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Pentagon correspondent Ben Wolfgang takes a look at the rise and use of artificial intelligence in the U.S. military. Whether predicting equipment failures on an F-16 before they happen or correcting overhead video in real time for a U.S. Special Forces team, the rapidly expanding role of AI in the military is both less exciting than its critics suggest and more important than most realize. While critics are wary about existential debates about whether AI can determine the value of human life, the focus deep inside the Pentagon is usually centered on how machines can improve efficiency. That includes quickly going through data, processing reports, sorting audio and video files, and performing other tasks. And finally, today is Flag Day, the annual celebration of the Stars and Stripes, though some children might not actually know what the right number of stars on the banner should be. A study released by educational platform Brainly finds more than 30% of children don't know the flag has 50 stars that represent the nation's 50 states. The survey, Sean Salai reports, also finds that 53% of middle and high school students don't discuss Flag Day in their schools. The day is the annual commemoration of the first approved American flag design, the banner with the iconic 13 stripes and 13 star circle on a field of blue in 1777. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in your favorite podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo. 